I'm Trey Breaker. And I'm Tanya Breaker. And together we are TNT, TNT Breaker, Breaker Made. Made. So today we're going to show you how we make our famous, world famous, grilled spare ribs. So we're going to take you through the preparation, the rub that we make, and then we're going to take you out to the grill. And we're going to show you how we light up the grill, the temperature that we put it on, how long it stays on, the whole cooking process. And then you'll see the finished product. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit subscribe. It should be right there in the corner down there. Just subscribe. Hit the button. Hit it now. Subscribe. Okay? Hit it now. They got to subscribe though, right? And follow us. Share with your family and friends. And we have plenty more recipes we'd love to show with you, to show you. Plenty more recipes we'd love to show you. Enjoy. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our ribs. So these are... Um, St. Louis style spare rib. So by St. Louis, what I mean is the way that it's been trimmed up. So you see that it's nice and even, straight, clean lines. Sometimes you get them from the store, and it'll have kind of a cap on it, and you'll have to cut it. But um, these um, that we purchased have already come St. Louis, so they're in good shape. So you want to take them out, dry them off. I like to pat them dry with the paper towel. And then I'm going to start with the back. So on the back of these, um, there is a membrane that you're going to want to take off. Some people cook it with it on. We like to take it off because it makes them a little more tender. Um, but it's this little thin membrane here. And what you're going to do, I like to take a little slit, and just kind of cut and score it like this to get it started. And I like to wear my gloves for this. And I kind of get my nail up underneath here to get it started. Sometimes it's real easy, sometimes it's not. But you get this piece of the membrane here, if it will cooperate today. And you get your fingers up under here and you're going to pull all this off. Sometimes it'll cooperate and it'll pull off in big strips, but otherwise you just kind of have to work at it and, um, and get it off. But that's the best thing you want to do. But that's the first thing you'll do is to prep these and pull this off. It's not a fun process, but um, that's what you do first. Okay? Okay. So you can see on this side I've got a good piece of it and I'm just pulling this all the way off all this membrane and it comes off and it's being nice to me today so you get those pieces off and you're just going to toss those and there's a little fat on here if you want to trim it up you can just to pull some of that off and clean it up but these are already pretty clean okay now that we've got the membrane taken off now it's time to prep them with the um the seasoning so the first thing we're going to do we like to rub ours with some olive oil first it just kind of helps the seasoning kind of melt down into it um, so we cover it all in olive oil. Some people, um, before they put it on the grill, some people like to use mustard, but we use olive oil and we rub it all over it. Front and back. And like I said, it's gonna help your seasonings adhere to it and kind of get really down in there. So olive oil it up. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our rub. And with our rub, we have, um, we make our own, or you can use any package rub, anything you buy from the store, whatever you like the seasoning to be, just season your meat. That's most important. So what we like to do, we use um, kosher salt, ground pepper, paprika, smoked paprika, um, ground mustard. We like turmeric, gives a little health benefits from the turmeric. Um, ground granulated garlic, granulated onion. And sometimes when we're doing pork, we'll add a little sage because sage goes really well with pork, but this is a pretty good standard rub. We keep um, containers like this. This was a container for some kosher salt. We just keep the containers, wash them out, put all of our ingredients in it, just shake them up. You can put these, you can be fancy and put it in a, a food processor or a grinder if you want, but everything in here is already ground up. So we just shake it up like this. We've got our rub all shaken together. And then you want to take it and you want to season high and season heavily. So we just season it very heavily like this with our rub. And you want to go heavy because you're going to lose some of this in the grill. Some of this is going to stick to the, the grill. So you go real heavy with it. Pat it in. So Tanya, why do you season heavy? Because you're going to lose some in the cooking process. And we like for our meat to taste like something, okay? So again, you can put whatever you want on it, but you gotta season your meat. It's gotta taste like something, okay? So Tanya, yes. why do you season so high? 
because it covers the meat more evenly if you season high like this. And it just kind of looks kind of cool. So that's what I'm doing now. And you got to do both sides. Don't season one side of your meat. You got to get the sides of it, get it all in there. So I get this prep. So my job is to prep the meat, season it, and then the grill master is gonna take over and put it on the grill and make it yummy. So that's that. And you can let it sit for a little while if you want to, to let the seasoning really kind of get into it. Um, we like to do that and let it sit for maybe 20, 30 minutes or so, and also get it up to room temperature before we put it on the grill. All right? Okay, so now we're gonna show you how we start the grill. So I have a Weber Performer which has a propane start. But what I like to use to start my grill is I use a chimney starter, which you have right here, um, that you put your coals in. You can put paper underneath or some kind of fire starter to help you start your grill and you just light it on fire and then it, it gets your coals going. Um, right now, uh, we're fighting the weather, but like I said in the army, you ain't training unless it's raining. We got a little rain and thunderstorm, so we're gonna start the grill, try to get that going, and then we'll show you how we, uh, we cook it with the indirect method. Okay, so we got the coals going. They're looking really good. Um, you can see I got my chimney starter. It's really hot. The coals are getting gray. I also put some coals down inside the little trays on this, each side. That's where we're going to do the indirect because the meat's going to go right in the middle. So this is the part that people get afraid of to do, but uh, it's not that hard. So I'm going to dump it. I'm going to dump my coals. I'm gonna get my chimney starter out the way. I'm gonna take my grill grate, stick it on. I normally put a pan in the middle to keep the drippings from hitting the grill because uh, it's a messy cleanup. And then what I'm gonna do is close my grill and let it get to the desired temperature that I would like it. Um, for today's cook, I'm gonna try to keep it between 275 and 325, depending on the weather, because the weather plays a big role, especially the rain. It's not that cold out, but uh, the rain usually makes the grill temperature go down. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so the grill's nice and hot. It's at the temperature I want it. Um, if you can see, I put a little foil pan down there. You don't have to buy a Weber brand. You can just buy any foil pan to keep the drippings from hitting on the grill where your ashes are gonna be. And I've also scraped. I went to the grill, um, actually got grill temperature where it got hot and I can use a scraper, something as simple as this or whatever your pre preference is. I also use, um, I take a wet paper towel, a bunch of wet paper towels, and I wipe down the grill just to get some of that blackness off from the grill from my last cut. So I'm gonna take my ribs. I'm gonna make sure I put bone side down. I guess I should do it this way. Are you still videoing? Okay, I'm gonna take my ribs and put them bone side down, right in the middle. Just like that. Some people like to use thermometers. Um, I just keep checking the meat. I'm gonna cook it for about two to two and a half hours, depending on how hot the grill gets. I just wanna get a nice temperature on the, on, the, on the rib to make it pop and still have that juice. What's so, the temperature? What are you gonna cook it at? I said, I already said that. I said 275 to 325. You didn't hear me? No. You didn't hear me? No. I didn't hear you say that. Okay, 275 to 325. I know that's a wide range but it's kind of hard to get the temperature exactly how I want it. But I'm gonna keep an eye on it for about two to two and a half hours. So we'll see how, what happens. And I keep my vents open, that's hot. My vent is open and I kind of close the bottom vents a little bit to get that, that temperature that I, I would like. So we'll see what happens in about two to two and a half hours. Okay, so we've had the, the ribs on the grill for two and a half hours. I said anywhere from two to two and a half. We kept it at two and a half hours, but we also got the grill at a perfect 300 degrees. And we're gonna check them now to make sure they're ready. If they're ready, we're gonna take them off. Wow, look at that. Ooh, Pretty bark, it's starting uh, to separate from the bone a little bit. Um, I know it's the way I like them, indirect. Um, I think it's, a, it's perfect. So we're gonna take those off. And uh, take them in the house and let them rest for about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're going to slice them up, baby. Okay, 
so our ribs have rested for at least 15 minutes. They're smelling up the house. I wish you could smell them because it is really smelling up the house right now. So we're going to try cutting them. Okay, um, you know what you're doing? Um, kind of. I'm going to flip them over. And I flip them over just so I can see the bone. Because sometimes ribs, they're not straight sure. up and down. They're kind of like at an angle. Just like your own ribs, I guess. Keep going. <laughs> so I'm going to cut. And if you wait it long enough, the juices won't run out on the ribs. So it uh, looks like they're not running out. So we're going to put a couple of bones on the plate. And look at that smoke ring. It's got a perfect smoke ring. If you can't see it, you will soon. So we're going to put that on the plate. Get turned on the pretty side. Pretty side? Pretty side. Pretty side up. Ooh. Let's add another bone on there. Another bone? Another bone. Put another bone on there. Cover like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to serve the ribs with a, a quick Asian slaw that we made. Um, the Asian slaw, it's just a, a bag of broccoli slaw. It's already sliced up for you, so you don't have to slice it. It's got a little um, red cabbage and carrots already in it. And you just add a little radish, what we like. We put jalapeno in it because we like it hot. You can omit that. And then it's just a quick vinaigrette. Um, just lighten it up instead of putting... Uh, mayonnaise on your slaw. So it's just a, a rice wine vinegar, a little freshly grated ginger, some cilantro, um, olive oil, fresh lime juice, and you just squeeze that all over and toss it together. And you got a quick light slaw to go with your, yeah. with your ribs. Especially people don't like a lot of mayonnaise in yeah. their slaw. This is a great addition. It's kind of cool. You gonna let me taste some of those? Yeah, you want to talk about the barbecue sauce a little bit? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. So, as you notice, we don't sauce our ribs. We want you to be able to taste the flavor of them. Um, you can add sauce after they've cooked, um, mm -hmm. or we like to eat them like, I like my ribs naked uh, without any sauce. But if Is that the only thing you like naked? We're talking about food. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so, um, but you can Check. also put some sauce on it. Um, and this is our famous Breaker Made barbecue sauce that you can put on the side. Maybe one day we'll, we'll do a video of that. But you can add whatever your favorite barbecue sauce is, or you can just eat them plain like we like. But I'm just really trying to eat. You want one of those? I want to taste one. Okay, let's say blessing. Okay. We thank the Lord for the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm going to let you have a rib. Have one. Get you a rib. Okay, all right. And I'm going to get a rib. Oh, you're not going to wait for me? Mm, okay. Mm. Mm hmm That's like competition style ribs. They really are. The rub, if you can see it on there, all that that we put on is still there. It's tasty, it's cooked through, it's bite through, isn't that what they say on the competition? Mm -hmm. It's bite through. Yeah, these are bite through. These ribs. are really good. So mm. again, we used our own dry rub, very basic. We also did the indirect method on the grill. That is that the fire was on the sides, not in the middle. And we left them indirect, bone side down, for at least two hours at 300 degrees. These went to two, uh, two and a half hours mm -hmm. at 300 degrees. And as you can see, they are perfect. Yeah. So. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to vote. Vote, please vote. Go vote, go vote, go vote. And we'll see you next time on TV.